This is part one of the Craftsman Emerson Gen 4 Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, check out my channel. There are some pretty thorough playlists in there that have a lot of information for you. This video will be covering the Gen 4 drill press, but if you have a Gen 3, they're almost identical and disassembly and assembly is roughly the same. So you can use this video for both of those generations of the Emerson drill press. However, if you have a generation three or a generation four Emerson commercial model, you're gonna to need to check out the playlist that I'm gonna link right here. In this video, we're gonna go over a brief introduction and then we're gonna get into the main component disassembly. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. This is a 1981 15 and a half inch Gen 4 Craftsman drill press, model number 113.213780. It was produced by the Emerson Manufacturing Company who took over drill press production for Craftsman after King Sealy when Emerson acquired King Sealy in 1964. This is the evolution of that classic Craftsman drill press that was pioneered by King Sealy. And a lot of the same principles and design features that, he, that were created back when King Sealy was making those drill presses carried on into these various generations of the Emerson drill presses. And this is the fourth generation and final generation of the American-made Craftsman Emerson drill presses. So I have a video that compares all the Emerson generation drill presses. And if you don't know what generation you have, I'll link it here. So we're just going to jump right into the rebuild. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the depth stop, which is right there. So we locked the quill in place and then pulled that off. And the shoe that goes on the inside of that fell out. Next, we're going to remove the belt cover. You just press these legs inward and they snap out of those holes in the head. Then we're going to loosen the tension on the belt and remove the belt. Next, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove that drill bit reference card that's hanging on there. That the previous owner had. Next we'll remove the adjustment assembly so you've got this screw on the end and then the adjustment rod and then you've got the adjustment mount which is that center part that I'm screwing out of the head now. You notice how the motor swung out of the way it's hinged on the other side. And here we are on that other side now, and it, there are two nuts uh, that are on two cone point set screws. And once we've loosened those nuts, then we need to unplug the motor from the power panel on the inside of the drill press. And then we can use a 532nd Allen to back out those cone point set screws. And we'll just back out that top one and we should be able to get the motor off of the drill press. Notice I'm holding on to the motor because it'll fall if you don't hold on to it. And there we go. So next we're going to remove, uh, this is a, an accessory and I have another video on this accessory. It's called the Pressmate and it's a table lift system that was made by the Pressmate company and you could order it through Craftsman if you wanted to or through Pressmate but uh, it's not actually part of this drill press rebuild it's just an accessory that was on this drill press when I got it and I've already got a video on that Pressmate and I'll link that here but that Pressmate has that those parts that I just removed, and then it's got this collar up top that will pull off of there. Now, if you notice, right above that collar, there is a column collar directly under the head 
for the drill press. And there's another column collar that's just out of view further down the column. And all of these gen from the Gen 3s on came with two of these column collars. And typically you'd mount one directly under the drill press head and then one below the table. So once we get this press mate collar off of there. All right, so unlike the classic Craftsman drill presses, these drill presses, the Gen 3 and the Gen 4, only had one machine screw that holds the spindle pulley assembly in the head casting. But this screw is giving me a heck of a time, so we'll leave it in there for now and come back to it later. So next we're going to go ahead and pull out the uh, quill spindle, but to do that we would have to pull out on the hub and there's no spring in this drill press so the hub comes all the way out. Um, there should be a spring in there and so that hub would have snapped back in there. And then we've got the quill lock and I have a video that covers the installation and removal of the spring and I'll link that here. Notice the uh, column collar I was talking about and so we're going to get rid of the uh, headlock because the column collar is supporting the head if the head could drop but the head won't drop because it's pretty well rusted on there so I'm just removing the sleeve and the lock I can rotate the head a little bit but uh, I can't lift it really well there's only about a quarter of an inch sticking up on the inside, and you'll see that in a minute when I rotate it where you can see the back side of it. But that quarter of an inch, there's enough rust and grime on there that it will not lift any higher right now. So we're going to spray some uh, PB Blaster on there to see if we can help loosen that up a little bit. Spray some on the inside to make sure that that bottom bore, there's two bores in there, uh, has some lubrication on it as well. Now I'm going to spend uh, a little bit of time here kind of fighting with this head to get it off of the column. And because uh, I wanted to show you guys a technique that I've found helpful. Um, if you've got a stuck head like like I do here. So using a bottle jack, we raise the table up so that the jack is usable. And then we use blocks of wood so we're not going to damage the castings. We lock that table down. And we're going to use the bottle jack to lift the head. So I found that I want to stay as close to the column as possible when I, when I use this method. If we start canting the head towards the front and towards the rear, then the head gets kind of locked in place. And it's a real pain in the butt uh, to work with. But you want to do this kind of light initially, just to make sure we're not going to... Uh, crack the cast iron. You can see that the head has moved up about a quarter of an inch, but we're still not clear on that top bore. And there's a lot of popping noise that I'm hearing, so I'm going to lower the bottle jack. And the head is going to kind of stay right where it is. It's not going to want to drop down or anything and at this point I really can't even rotate it so we're going to move the bottle jack more towards the center of the head and use a rubber dead blow hammer to try to dislodge the head a little bit 
So there are other techniques you can use. I mean, you can use some heat, you know, get a torch or whatever, but uh, I just kind of got it in my mind that I'm going to fight with this thing until I get it off of there. So you can see I'm whacking it pretty good and it wasn't even moving. So we've moved the bottle jack back closer to the column now and we're getting it to, to move a little bit more. And so I think now we're clear of that top bore. So right now the head casting is just the bottom bore uh, sitting on the column. So, but it, it doesn't drop down, which means it's not moving very smoothly. But we'll go ahead and clear off that table. And you can see how much I've got it moved now. It's moved about an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And now we can kind of wiggle it as we lift and get it up there. And it's still going to get hung up on that top quarter of an inch portion of the column that has all that rust and grit on it. So we raise the table up again. We bring the bottle jack back in again. And that's about how much of the column is still on the inside. So and if you don't have one of these bottle jacks, just go to a garage sale or... An estate sale, you can pick them up for like 10 bucks, but they're a real lifesaver when you're dealing with something like this. So we're going to do this until we get that head almost completely off of there. And the fact that it's still, it's moving means that we're, you know, we're in the right spot. So maybe we can lift it off of there. So what I want to do is I want to stand on the floor base and then try to lift it. So to do that, I need to swing that table kind of towards the camera and get it out of the way. Shoot some more PB blaster in there. So this really took me probably about a half an hour to do. And I'm, my head's probably bright red from lack of oxygen at this point. Because when I strain myself, I tend to hold my breath. Which is something you shouldn't do, but that's what I do. And of course, all this is like at shoulder height. So, you know, the muscle groups you've got working on this are like your upper back and your arms, but it's in this weird height area that you don't have a lot of arm strength involved in this. So I'm like, man, how am I going to do this? So we'll get that table out of the way now. And if I can stand more under it, if you will, uh, then I might be able to put a little more force up like that and then get it to start swinging back and forth and man it's just a bear so and I've done enough of these to tell you that Hey, dropping it back down and cleaning the column up a little bit more really isn't going to get you very far. This is, you just kind of got to fight it until you can get it off of there. So now that we got it off of there, now we'll remove that column collar. Remember I said there are two of these on the column. And uh, they may or may not be on your Gen 4 or Gen 3 that you're playing with, but... Uh, they came with them originally. And then we can unlock the table and just lift it off the column. Of 
of course, it's going to get hung up a little bit. But once we polish this column, all that stuff will slide super easy. And then we've got that bottom column collar. And then we've got the uh, lock screw for the column. This is the column base screw. It's a three-quarter inch wrench I'm using on it. And for whatever reason, they stopped using a shoe on the inside of the base on the Gen 4s. So there's no shoe in there. Basically, that screw goes all the way to the column. And then we'll try to lift the column out of there. And it's not going to come. So I'm going to show you how you remove a seized column in the base. So you basically want to just put something down and get this kind of level. And then we'll spray some PB Blaster on there. And the column is protruding through the base by about a quarter of an inch. I'll zoom in here. You can see it there. And we're just going to use a heavy hammer and start tapping that column until it starts moving. And once it starts moving, then we'll use, uh, this is just a piece of rod steel. And we're making sure that we're bracing it just on the column, not on the base, because it'll chip that base if it hits the base. And we'll tap that column. There are three bores here. So once we get into that second bore, and it's moving smoothly, then we can just go ahead and rotate it and pull on it until it comes out of there. And that's how you remove a seized column. Real easy. So here we are on the table, and we'll go ahead and pull out the table lock. So you got the lock screw handle and the sleeve and then the lock nut just like on the head. So the table's disassembled. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the feed knobs and the feed handle rods. So if any of these are really tight, I'm going to show you how to remove one that's stuck in the hub and then uh, if you've got a knob stuck on a rod, it's kind of the same thing. You can just put the rod inside a vise and then twist the knob off. But most of the time you can get it with hand strength. So this rod is stuck inside that hub though. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put the rod inside this vise. And then we're going to twist the hub off of it. Being careful not to strip out any of those threads or damage the hub in any way. And there it is. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos, you can see how I've been putting a lot of those parts in little bins so we don't lose them. And next, we're just going to drive out that pin. And this pin is the hub pinion pin that holds the spring inside the hub. And there's no spring in here, so that pin comes out. One side of that pin is splined, and we drove it so that the spline side is coming out. And then... The pinion is pretty well stuck inside the hub right now. And on all of your uh, Emerson models, there should be a fiber washer right here. So even in the Emerson 150s, because they changed how the spring works, there should be a fiber washer in there. So once we got that fiber washer off of there, we're just going to shoot some PB blaster between the hub and the pinion and let that sit for a bit. Next we can go ahead and remove the nut on the bottom of the depth stop rod and that's a 5 8 wrench I'm using there. There's a lot of rust on this drill press. It's just it must have been sitting outside. 
So then we've got the uh, feed stop bracket lock nut and under that nut there is a washer and a lock washer going to the screw and I was using a 7 16 wrench. Once we got all that off of there we can go ahead and get that depth stop rod out of there. And then we need to remove the chuck. So to remove the chuck, we're going to insert a large uh, Allen wrench in there. This is a nine millimeter Allen wrench. Just make sure the flats on the Allen wrench line up with the flats on the jaws for the chuck. And then tighten it down. We'll take that over to a vise and we'll put the Allen wrench inside the vise. And there's a tool that we're going to use here that's made by Apex, and I've been told they don't make that tool anymore, but it's a spanner wrench. Um, so one of my uh, friends on Garage Journal found a real cheap replacement version of it, but all we're doing is twisting the safety lock collar off of the thrust collar that's on the spindle. But I'll put a link to the spanner wrench in the description of the video along with a lot of inf information that you guys may find helpful. And you can see the spindle and the safety or the thrust collar are actually spinning now. So we need to hold on to the top part of that spindle that's out of camera and then spin this nut off of there. And that forces the chuck off of the taper that's on the spindle. So right now I could just lift the whole spindle out of that chuck, but I'm going to make sure that I'm clear of all the threads before I do it. And there we go. And I've got a video all about the Jacobs chuck and the different versions and how to install and remove them and disassemble them and everything. And I'll link that here. So after we got the chuck out of there, we're going to go ahead and pull that Allen wrench out of the chuck and we'll go ahead and disassemble the chuck at this point. So we want to go ahead and have the jaws protruding by about a half an inch and we're going to use a socket to protect those jaws. And then I'm just going to use an old sleeve from an older chuck to push this sleeve off of here. But if you watch that omnibus video, the Jacobs Chuck omnibus video that I linked a minute ago, it explains all of this. And then we're just going to compress the vise which will press the sleeve off of the chuck. And it actually needs to go a little further, but I'm going to pull it out and look at it here in a second, I think. To see if that sleeve will come off, but it doesn't want to, so... It's got to get past, there's a split nut on the inside there, and it's got to get past that. So we'll do this again. And there it is. So now we can disassemble it. So you've got the sleeve, which we're going to just slide off of there. And then you've got the split nut, which sometimes they'll just fall out if there's no lubrication in there. And that's it there. And then you've got the three jaws. So you can push two down inside the chuck and then pull one out at a time. And that's as far as we're going to disassemble the chuck, and that's going to wrap up this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. And video two will be coming shortly where we'll finish with the disassembly and then we'll start uh, cleaning everything up. As always, I appreciate the support and I will see you next time.